Hi YouTube, it's Jen. Welcome to my unedited and very, very late night uh, update version of what's happening with my amputation uh, recovery. So since I've spoken to you, I have had my sutures out and I have been um, given the green light to go ahead towards actually getting the amputation um, fitted for a prosthetic. So the first step is they have put me into a shrinker and I'm in what's called a an ampu shield brace because I'm per, I'm personally working with hanger prosthetics and this is one of their proprietary braces. Um, and right now it's been incredibly difficult because I'm not tolerating the shrinker very well. It's very painful. It's causing a lot of nerve pain. Uh, so I keep it on and then I take it off for a while when the pain becomes too intense and then I put it back on and take it off, etc. Um, the first 10 days after surgery was really amazing. I mean, I had no pain at all, like literally no pain. And then on the 11th day, it was just like all hell broke loose. It was horrible. There was extreme shocks and horrible muscle cramping and muscle draws that were so intense. I actually wound up pulling my lateral cruciate ligament. And so the left side of my knee and down into uh, where the sutures were was really, really sore. And I had a lot of bruising from where the muscle was pulling so hard. Um, it was unusual in the sense that typically there's pain right after the nerve block wears off. But for me, it waited 10 days. Um, so, you know, hint to anyone who knows me, nothing ever is normal with me. Um, so in this case, it was just one of those situations where the pain waited to engage for, you know, 10 days. And I'm not going to argue about that because that 10 days was great. Now, the way I manage pain now, um, is I still elevate. I can't do ice anymore. I'm past the ice point. Now ice actually hurts. Um, and so I've been given, you know, different, um, nerve medications, as well as uh, muscle relaxers, which I don't take unless it's you know bedtime, basically. But what I do use is called the Kylo Pain Patch. Now, I'm not getting paid in any way by this company. I'm not an employee. It's not something that, um, you know, that they've told me to do. It's just that when I find something that really, really works, I do endorse it. And this is something that has been actually remarkable for me. Um, I saw it when it was a starter, so one of the Kickstarter campaigns, and picked one up um, about two years ago. And I used it for a back injury from an MRAP um, in a rock. I was in the back seat on a jump, what's called a jump seat, and uh, we hit an IED hole, and I went flying and came down hard with my um, uh, my gear and my uh, Kevlar that was on. So my body armor slammed right into my back. And so I've had, you know, back injury, back pain from that ever since. So I used the Kylo and I was a little unsure of whether or not it was going to work, but I put it on and instantly the pain was gone. Now, the principle behind the Kylo is like a TENS unit, but it doesn't send a signal to, you know, cancel a, a signal out. So for example, if you're getting pain from one area, a TENS unit will send an electrical current and it cancels. This doesn't do that. The nanotechnology of it is just that it blocks it entirely and neutralizes the signal. So um, these are little metal bits that are inside the plastic and it usually comes with like this gel sticker that uh, you get like several of them with the pack when you buy one. Um, and the gel sticker can be washed so that you can reuse it multiple times. Now with this, it's been awesome because I put this on the left side of my leg and instantly the pain stopped and the horrible muscle draws completely ended. The problem is, is that I don't have a second Kylo and so it's all on the right side now. So I'm still experiencing horrible pain, but only on one side of my leg and um, thankfully, it means that the lateral cruciate ligament has had a time to heal because I had the Kylo on it. If you are interested in looking at Kylo, if you are interested in purchasing Kylo, I highly recommend it to anyone who is experiencing any kind of pain. If you work out, if you do sports, I don't know, any of that. If you do anything where you have pain, 
and um, you're not really interested in using heavy medications, this is seriously like I can't even begin to tell you how amazing it is. Um, I have bought some for presents for other people and they also talk about how amazing it is. Um, so I contacted Kylo and I let them know how um, absolutely fantastic their product is. And they gave me the ability to give a coupon code. So if you're interested in purchasing one, you can save 20%. If you go to, let's see, it is gokylo.com. So it's G-O, W-W-W dot G-O, and it's K-A-I-L-O dot com. So gokylo.com, and you're going to use the coupon code J Clark. 2020. So J-C-L-A-R-K 2020. And you can get an additional 20% off. Now, right now they're holding a Memorial Day sale. So the coupon code works on top of that because I just bought another one so that I can now completely envelop my leg in it. Um, so I was actually able to get one of these Kylos now for $54. They are normally 119 and they come with a little pouch and several of the adhesives. So um, it's a great investment. This, this is, like I said, already a couple years old. They don't wear down. I mean, it's it's been holding up magnificently, and I use this thing just all the time. Um, again, I've also bought it for friends because it's been such a great investment in helping people with pain. So other than that, um, right now I've just been kind of working... I'm back at sewing and trying to do as much as I can um, until the leg just becomes too unbearably painful and I have to elevate it. So I kind of spend my time in between sewing or um, reading. I'm trying to get caught up on some of my reading for my, my PhD, my doctoral studies. Right now I'm on hiatus and I go back in September. So I'm going to try and get on top of all the reading before I go back. Um, that's been you know, pretty interesting, so I'm trying to do that. Um, but also, I've just been doing a lot of hand stitching as well as exercising, trying to get the legs to be nice and strong before I get this prosthetic, uh, prosthetic leg. There is one major change that has happened that uh, has me really, really nervous, and that is that my husband has switched jobs. And... Uh, it was one of those situations where one door closed and another opened, and it it just is going to be a much better position for him. He's actually going to work with the company uh, that is doing my physical therapy right now, and he will be an in-home healthcare nurse, and it is something that will be amazing for him because he is such a good nurse, and he has an awesome bedside manner, and he really wanted to be able to work with his patients and spend time with them. So this is going to be a really good deal for him, and it's going to give him the chance to study and work on his nurse practitioner degree. So all around, really, really good. It's a great move for him. I'm excited about it for him, but we're changing insurance. And the reason that that is so terrifying is because we have almost three months, two and a half months, yeah, it'll be two and a half months without insurance. And that's right when I am supposed to be getting this new leg. So I have a lot of people scrambling right now trying to figure out how we're going to work this because I'm going to wind up losing insurance at the end of the month and then having to wait with no insurance at all. Um, <laughs> and I just, I don't know. I just don't know how it's going to work out. Um, so it's a little terrifying, but... You know, we've been in really bad situations before, and we've made it work. So I'm going to trust and have faith that this is going to be okay, too. And um, it's really just been on my mind a lot. It's something that is pretty scary, but um, my physical therapist is, he's willing to work around this. He's willing to do what he has to and whatever he can to help um, and the prosthetics, uh, company, they're also willing to do what they can to help within reason. I mean, everybody has a job, 
we, we all know that nobody needs to go without getting paid, but we are doing our best to, uh, to keep on track, but it's really intimidating. It's a scary time. And, uh, it was something I wanted to document and get out there because when you're doing something like this, you know, you have an amputation that you're healing from and, you know, there's a, a goal, there's a timeline that we have set aside that we're trying to, to meet and match because I have huge things coming up with, with my job and with life and I, I kind of need to be mobile for them. Um, and everything was on track except now with the insurance that's going to really hold it up. Um, so that's kind of scary and upsetting. Uh, just, you know, American medical systems, it's kind of messed up. We all know that. So, I don't know. If you have comments or questions or advice or um, just support, <laughs> I'd love to hear it. Um, I'm doing my best to stay optimistic. I haven't really gotten down yet. This is still an amazing experience. Um, even with the pain, it's been better than what I lived with before. Um, so I'm still excited. I'm still looking forward to an amazing future. My daughter and I continuously talk about all the cool things we're going to do and the walks and the hikes and the camping. And, um, you know, my husband and I talk about diving again. We're going to be doing some river diving. We still have our BCDs and our diving equipment. So we'll just get those back in order and ready to go for when I'm able to, uh, to start diving again. So I think if I stay, you know, optimistic and keep on track with that no matter what happens with the insurance it's not going to get me that down um, but it certainly is a uh, a huge bump in the road but you know for my husband if this is the right thing then I'm willing to do whatever it is we need to do um, so that's the update and uh I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if you have any uh, questions or comments or if there's anything that you would like me to talk about. Um, I know there's other folks that are on YouTube that do talk about amputations. I'm in a different kind of level. Uh, it seems like my age grouping is older. Um, I've been through a lot with the leg prior to having the amputation. Um, and, you know, each person's experience is their own and different and unique. But, you know, I, uh, I have a unique perspective on what's happening, and I'm more than happy to talk about it. So if you have comments, please leave them. Otherwise, I will update you next time. Let's see, I have another appointment June 9th. So if I don't update you before then, I definitely will update you uh, after I see the doctor because I'm really hoping to get the green light for the actual casting on the prosthetic leg because... That's where we're headed. That's what it looks like what's going to happen. And as long as the insurance doesn't hold me back, we will be one step closer to that leg and one step closer to running and hiding or hiking and just uh, all the cool stuff that I used to be able to do. At any rate, I really appreciate you guys checking in. I really appreciate the time that you give me. Thank you so, so, so much. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye.